Okay, hi year 10, uh, just some help for this week's work. Um, what I've got here on the screen is I have uh, five shapes and we want to find the area of each one of these shapes. So we'll start off up here, we have a rectangle. And to find the area of the shape, we need to do the base times by the height. So we just do the base times the height of the shape. And that gives me five times seven, which is 35 centimeters squared. Okay, so that's straightforward. A parallelogram, which is what I've got here, follows exactly the same rule. The base is nine, the height of the shape is four. Okay, so we're talking about the perpendicular height. What we're not interested in is this length here, the slant height. We don't want that. That doesn't help us to work out the area. So we only want the vertical height, the height that goes straight up. So in this case, we do nine times four, and that gives me 36 centimeters squared. Okay, and that works with parallelograms and rhombuses. So, these two follow the same rule. Okay, let's go around in a clockwise way. Um, we have a triangle here. In fact, we have two triangles. Now a triangle, as hopefully we know, is half the area of a rectangle or a square. So if I have a rectangle and I have a triangle in it, then the triangle takes up exactly half the area. Okay, so for this triangle, we would do the base, which is 15, times the height, which is six, and then we'd half it. So what we'd do is we'd do 15 times six, which is 90, then we'd divide it by two, which is 45 centimeters squared, okay? So remember for triangles, it's half the base times by the height. Now this, Question down here is a little bit more tricky. The base is five, the height, as you can see, is not this length, it's not this length. It's the actual height of the triangle from the base. So in this case, it goes up 10. So for this one, I would do half of five times 10, and that gives me an answer of 25 centimeters squared. Finally, we have a trapezium. Now a trapezium is defined by having two sides which are parallel and two sides which are not parallel, okay? The parallelogram has two parallel sides, whereas a trapezium has one pair of parallel sides. Now the formula for this is it's a half A plus B times H. Now you probably know what the H is. The H is the height. The A and the B, well the A is the length at the top, and the B is the length at the bottom. So if I fill this in, I'll have a half times by 14 plus 26 times by 12. Okay, well, 14 plus 26 is 40. So I have a half of 40 times 12. So we have 20 times 12. 10 times 12 is 120. So two times that is 240. Okay, but this is the formula you use when you're working out trapezium. Okay, so here's an example of a slightly more challenging question you might face. Um, we are told that these two shapes have the same area. And what you want to do is you want to find this value x. Now, for this case, we're going to use the area of a triangle. So we're going to do half base times height which gives me a half of eight times five. So the area of this triangle is 20 centimeters squared. Now thinking about the area of this rectangle, we know that we do the base times the height. So it would be five times X or five X. So we now know that 20 is the same as five X. So we write five X equals 20 and we solve by dividing by five. So X has a length of four centimeters. Okay, moving on to some scale factors. So scale factor work or similarity 
we've looked at it in 2D, thinking about um, just lengths, but you can also work, work it out with area and volume. Now these are two cubes, here's cube one, here's cube two. Now the thing that's important to remember about cubes is that all the faces are the same, all the lengths are the same, okay? Now let's say, for example, the length of this cube is two centimeters. So all these measurements are two. And I'm going to double the length scale factor. So I'm gonna make this shape twice as big, which means that over here, it's gonna be four centimeters on all these measurements. I don't label them all up, but you see what I mean? They're all four centimeters, okay? So the length scale factor, which I'm gonna write here as LSF, equals two, because we times this length by two to get four, the new length scale factor. Okay, well, let's see what happens if I apply the same to the face. So what's the area of one of these faces? Well, it's got two dimensions, two and two. So the face, this area is four centimeters squared, just one of the faces. So if the length scale factor is two, then this one must be eight. Or is it? Let's work it out on our new shape and see what's going on. This one has dimensions of four and four. So this square must be 16 centimeters squared. All right, so hold on a minute. Four times two is eight, not 16. So what's the area scale factor, ASF? Well, it seems to have changed. We've times four by four to get 16. So the area scale factor is four. Okay, that's interesting. Well, let's go one step further and look at the volume scale factor and see what happens when I compare those. Right, what's the volume of this shape then? Well, the volume for a cube is easy. We just do the three dimensions times by each other. So we do two times two times two. So the volume of this shape is eight centimeters cubed. What about the volume of this bigger shape? Well, this bigger shape is gonna be four times four times four. Well, four times four times four gives me 64. Okay, four times four is 16. 16 times four times by two is 32. Times by two again gives me 64 centimeters cubed. Okay, well, how do I go from eight to 64? Do I times it by four? Well, if I do, I get 32. So actually, I need to times the volume by eight. So our volume scale factor is eight. So look, as the length changes and is times by two, the area scale factor is times by four and the volume scale factor is times by eight. So actually what we do is if you work out the length scale factor and then you square it, I get the volume scale factor. If I take the length scale factor and I cube it, I get the volume scale factor. Okay. And that should make a little bit of sense because essentially I'm taking a length and I'm taking it into two dimensions, so I'm squaring it. And then I'm taking the length, I'm taking it into three dimensions, so I'm cubing it. Let's look at an example to see how we can use this. So here is a random shape. Now, one thing I know is that these two shapes are similar. I'm told they are similar shapes. I know that I've got two lengths which match here. Okay, I've got four and eight. So straight away, I can work out my length scale factor. My length scale factor is two because four times two is eight. Okay, well then what's my area scale factor? Well, we know from our previous slide that it must be the length scale factor squared. So the area scale factor is four. The volume scale factor, if you want to work it out, you don't have to, but it's eight. But we need to use the area scale factor. Now, the area of the first shape is 10. So I'm gonna times that area by my area scale factor, which is four, which gives me 40 centimeters squared. So my new shape, I've made it twice as big lengthwise, and it's made the area four times as big. Okay, two cuboids, same process. I've got the volume of the smaller one. I want to find the volume of the bigger one. Right, well, let's look at the scale factor between the lengths first. So the length scale factor 
3 to 9, well, that's 3, or times by 3. The area scale factor must be 3 squared, which is 9. And the volume scale factor must be 3 cubed. 3 cubed is 27. Okay, well, the calculation, I do 10 times my volume scale factor, which is 27, and I get 270 meters cubed. Now, that might seem like a lot, but by increasing or by making the length scale factor three times as big, I've got to make every dimension three times as big. So I've made the area nine times as big, then I made the volume 27 times as big. Now we've got some questions on that. The last thing to look at is congruency. Congruency. This is a word you only see in maths, and it means exactly the same. That's what it means, exactly the same in every way. So what congruency isn't, it's not similarity. Okay, similarity is similar, but not quite the same. Okay, um, yeah. So, here are some shapes, here are some triangles, and with congruency, we are really concerned about triangles only. Now, some of these triangles on this page match. They don't all match, but some of them match. Let's try and see if we can find them. Well, here's a triangle, 10, 8, and 7. Let's have a look around. Well, this one, 10, 8, and 7, looks like it matches. Okay, the sides are all the same. Looks about the same. So let's say these two match. Okay, this one and this one match. Great. Okay, let's keep looking. This one looks pretty good. It's got a right angle. It's got 6 and it's got 15. So this one and this one match. 7, 76, this one and this one match, they're congruent, so what about this one, does this one fit in anywhere? Well this one looks similar to this one, but actually the lengths aren't the same, so it's not exactly the same. This one, it looks similar to this right angle, but again the lengths aren't quite the same. So when we look at congruency, we need to know why something might be congruent. So here we go. I have some pairs of triangles here, which some of which are congruent and some of which are not. Now, we're going to use a, a notation. We're going to write S, and S stands for side, and A stands for angle. A couple more, we're going to say that R stands for right angle. And we're going to say that H stands for hypotenuse. The hypotenuse means the longest side. So for example, a triangle like this, this one here is the hypotenuse. This only works on right angle triangles. Okay, let's look at this first shape. These two are congruent, okay? I'm gonna write congruent. And the reason they're congruent is because the sides match eight and eight, six and six, seven and seven. So these two are congruent because of S, 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 which means side, side, side. The next one, well, these two are congruent as well, but for a different reason. We have an angle, A. We have a side, which matches S. And we have another side that matches S, A, S. Side, angle, side, side, angle, side. Now the angle must go between those two, okay, in order for it to work. The last one on this side, these two are congruent as well. I'm getting bored of the word congruent quite soon. Um, we have a, we have an angle which matches, we have a side in between which matches, another angle. So these match because of A S A angle side angle. Okay, this one here. Well look, I've got an angle. Another angle, and another angle. Now that's nice, but these are not congruent. And the reason they're not congruent is because they are different sizes. They could have the same angles, but this one is just smaller than this one, so they're not identical, okay? If, 
you know, I gave one of you an ice cream like this, and I gave one of you an ice cream like this, you'd say, well, hold on, they're not the same. We're like, yeah, they are, they look similar. No, they're not the same. This one's smaller, this one's bigger, so they're not congruent, okay? So the condition AAA, we don't use, okay? Be very, very afraid. Do not use AAA, it doesn't work. The last one here, these two triangles are congruent, okay? You may notice they're right angled. We have a right angle here, which is R. Hypotenuse, nine, okay? And we have a side here, which corresponds. So these two are congruent because of RHS. So there are four conditions which work. And there's one that doesn't, okay? AAA does not work. So last little bit in this video, you may be asked to prove, big word of math, prove, okay? Mathematically prove that these two triangles are congruent. Now, what you might do is you might have a look at it and think, right, well, I haven't got much information here, but actually you do. The first thing you've got is you've got these two 12s, okay? So, 12 centimeter side, matches or is equal so you have a side which matches s this side here going from here to here is actually shared okay so we have a shared side okay so because they're alongside each other they must be the same length so the shared side um, works so that's another s and up here, you may notice that these two angles are the same, okay? So angles are equal, so we have an A. So you then write, therefore, dot, 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 ergo cognito sum, triangles are congruent because of S, A, S. Now in questions, you may have sort of it labeled like this, A, B, C, D, and you'll have to say, for example, that the angle A, B, C equals the angle C, B, D. That's the more formal way of saying it, okay? But as you get through this, you'll get better at getting used to the sort of lingo and the terminology. Okay, good luck.